<laughs> All right, let's get underway. It's time to take the prairie. Actually, my favorite map to watch right now. Genuinely, I, I think prairie is the most refreshing thing we've had in a while. Dry Arabia is like, eh. This, 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 I, I, I genuinely feel like, I mean, not everyone's going to agree with it, but I feel like I, I would rather see prairie as the default map over Dry Arabia. People are going to flip their crap right now because, in fairness, Prairie, while fun, isn't as well balanced for Dry Arabia when it comes to picking any sieve. So that's why Dry Arabia will always stay as, like, the de facto. But Prairie definitely brings a lot of interesting dynamics. I was quite surprised that we didn't see uh, one or two of the other maps it shown worked. at Rebel Wall or make it into the rotation. Like, the most noticeable one would have been... Um, oh, what's it called? Damn, I went on about so long and I've forgotten its name. It was the one in the... In the valley. I think it was Gorge. Gorge. I think Gorge was a really fun map. Maybe the issue is that Gorge in a lot of ways plays like Prairie, and that's why they didn't want to commit to it. But those type of maps provide a, a really interesting dynamic. I think one of the things that people are taking note of is when you introduce maps like this, and you essentially just remove wood as a dominant factor, you get more aggressive games. You get more productive games, I say. People have to come out and play the map. People can't think about... 40, 50, 60 minutes in the game as much because the only thing they're thinking there is, oh my god, deforestation is a problem because no wood will exist at that stage in the game. Well, one sieve that has been doing pretty damn well on this map, has to be said, especially with the silver tree builds we've been seeing at the moment, is the Mongols. And Kazva playing rank 20th in the world right now will benefit from the big grabs he's getting. Uh, it's very important, this detail, by the way. Opening up, getting a decent amount of sheep is critical. It's why we often see Mongol players even opt to get a stable drop and a second scout to get as many sheep as possible because you want to not have to use this wood to build pastures. Even more so since they nerf pastures, adding an extra 20 seconds in the time it takes to produce sheep. Now, speaking of things that need a lot of wood, and we're not talking about your mum, we're talking about the English. Sieve that typically goes hard in to wood usage, right? Even on the discount farms, it can add up quickly. You're thinking about Lombos. That's a lot of wood being used there. Spearmen, horsemen. Unless you want to rush up to Castellation and go Knights, there's a lot of demand for wood, but not much of it existing on this map. That's why I don't think we often see English here at all. In fact, I'd say like mm, English to me, while it has some places with a tempo aggressive timing, I put them maybe mid-pack maximum when it comes to prairie performances they're not quite as brutalized by their existence on this map as something like the roost per se but they can struggle in some ways i think for me Lenok in this type of game like he's up against mongols so he's probably gonna feel a need to pressure but in an ideal world the way Lenok would probably want to play this is build four or five longbows slight bit of poking then escalate farms and go castle age because then you can just build knights, right? Like that, that's the thing. That's why Mongols and French especially feel really good on Prairie. Prairie is all about food gold production units because you have huge surpluses of gold right at the beginning next to your base with the fat gold veins you start off on. And food, like if there's anything that's always going to exist no matter what map we choose, it's going to be food. Have I seen the Fast Castle Ottoman that's getting popular on the ladder? I think I've seen like one build of it. I haven't seen it in depth yet. But I can imagine it. Like the, the, the problem with the Ottomans is it's very difficult to completely shut them down. And even if they just opt into passive production and maybe only pay for a few units, that's enough to defend, right? Like usually this full archer build is about an all-in type play. And the logic there is, you know, you're not going to get Fast Castle because you have to produce everything to keep that dominant lead. But you can defend with a lot less. Like, if we're being realistic about Age of Empires 4, based on initial resource generation on a lot of maps, it's fairly feasible to play Turtle and go for your more greedy options, right? It's why we had to see nerfs to things like the Pro Scouts players. It's why we had to see things like the TC boom get nerfed as well, right? It's just because defensive play was a little bit too easy and a little bit too rewarding. Um, I still feel like there's maybe one or two things we could do to, to justify more map-focused play. But overall, like map control is playing a key role in the current meta. And people aren't necessarily sleeping on the value of going for deer, going for ball, and playing out of their base anymore, which is so wonderful to see. I think if we'd remained in total fiesta land, right, it, it just becomes one of the most stagnant experiences for AoE4. This is a much better and brighter time. 
Tech Ups, of course, now coming out. It's going to be the Silver Tree from Kazva. It always is, though. Let's be real here. You're always going for the, the Silver Tree. Deerstone just seems to have fallen off the side of a cliff at this stage, especially on maps like this, with trade being quite feasible when you get a glorious backward spawn like this. Even a short trade route like this will, will pay decent dividends when you consider the traders aren't actually that expensive. Only 60 wood and 30 gold. Of course, you know, we talked about valuable use of this initial wood. That was the other importance of getting all these sheep early on, is it means that you don't have to use this wood line on pastures necessarily. Instead, you can take that wood and invest it in traders. We'll say I'm a little bit surprised Kaz didn't maybe open up with the stable drop straight away. I thought that the Kazva would actually drop a stable straight away to get the second scout for those additional sheep we talked about. Um, would love to get his thoughts on this because I, I don't think it necessarily hurts your timings to do it that way around. I think in some ways it's more beneficial because you get the flexi of horsemen immediately. And you know, if, if Kazva had never intended to go horsemen at all, I'd understand it. But we are seeing horsemen here. And sorry, let me just switch that around so you see how things are playing out. Spears being added in already by Leenot though to count this out and. Well, hello, Leenok. This is an interesting one. Building the stables and going into horsemen. Now, there are some situations where you really want to keep that two-unit comp as English. It's really beneficial to you. You just want to use something to buffer away your enemy and then longbows to, to dominate, right? That's usually the, the one two punch English go for. But this is a game where I really like the horsemen being added in. It's not about directly taking fights necessarily which you can do anyway, because his arch is being built by Kazwa. It's the fact that if you reach a stage where you have a lead, but you get stalemated, these horsemen that the English are building are going to allow you to snipe out the trade. In fact, just their existence might slow down the trade escalation from Kazwa. Well, as soon as I say that, he's going maximum distant trading right now. Uh, I don't know about this, though. 25 gold is really not the return you're looking for. There we go. Oh, thank God that... You know, actually, like... I was wondering how they would fix the trade exploit right now. I mean, it's, it is an exploit, right? Where you build a marketplace next to the neutral trade post. Now, I was worried about, like, the way it would calculate the resource values if you made it so you had to set, like, a clear definitive home and, and start point, finish point, so that you couldn't do that trick anymore. But when you see that the values actually also update when you change the location of the, the trade drop-off point... I don't think there's a. I don't think th this should be that hard of uh, a thing to fix. For those wondering what I'm talking about, there's a trick where you can build a marketplace next to a neutral trade post, spawn traders out of that tra of that marketplace, and then set the home trade point across the other side of the map. And what happens is you essentially get paid in half the time that you otherwise should have to wait on trade. It's ridiculously broken right now. Genuinely, I think it's the the one thing that is making trade way too strong. I think trade builds should be somewhat feasible in the early game, but they shouldn't just be a de facto go-to because it's essentially free. And the problem you have right now, especially with the Mongols, that's why Mongols are getting a lot of flack for this because they do it so well with Silver Tree, um, is this build where you open with Silver Tree, you know, even if you stop at two traders, you get decent payday and it also forces your opponent to respond. And if you think about the logic here, like I'm teching up, I need to tech up anyway, I spend 600 resources to do that. I build two traders that cost 180 resources, half of which is going to be passively generated. Your response has to be worth several hundred resources to counter out trade. Because when you're playing on the other side, when you're playing Lenok in this situation, you have to play the game as if that trade route is going to boom up to 50 traders at some point. Otherwise, it will. That's why he's looking to clash now. Nice pinch, Horseman, able to wrap in. So decent damage being done. Just a few Lombobon on the side from Lenok. Spearman count. On the front line is dwindling, but enough of them to contest this still. And notice the Lombos are tugging out the arches. More spearmen on the way in. So this looks like a fight that Kazva is going to begin to lose. Has to retreat away. Good micro there by Lenok. Love the way that he came around the back of the horseman and then used that opportunity to fold in the spearmen. Archers got swarmed and overwhelmed. And after that, with just a small army, he can now stop all trade. He's even going to stop the builders from getting that trade to be more optimal. As it looks like he's going to shift in and spot the outpost being built. Trade at this stage for Kazva is not really that high. Kazva has lost an insane amount of value at this stage. Doubled up in army value and lost double in terms of army so far in this game. Worrisome situation for the Turk. He's going to need something extra. Looks like it's going to be an additional stables coming out. We'll be setting up a marketplace at home. Realizes, okay, I've got these traders. I don't want them to idle and they need a short trip instead. 
In fact, if I'm not mistaken, is he... He might be considering... I think Kaz was considering going north side instead. Dangerous game to play here. Because the issue you have now is... Leenor, until he sees a bigger army, he's going to make this maneuver, right? He's going to just block off the neutral trade posts. So even if you change north side to your base, this is still a problem. Now, this play from Leenor is risky. Because when you play English with a slow comp, which it is, it's Spearman, Lombos, even if you've got Horsemen in there, the majority is slow. Whenever you put yourself on the opposite side of your opponent's base, it's very hard to reinforce. And that means that this army should easily be picked apart in the next minute or two. In the meantime, it looks like Kasper has pulled off all the horsemen headed towards the English economy. Now, I don't know if he's meaning to essentially tank all these traders right now. I don't think that's intentional. <laughs> Trying to bait in his opponent here. Kazva. Seems like things have really slowed down here. We did see the racks getting dropped, so now switching to Spearman. You can really f get that feeling that Kazva wanted to slowly crawl towards Castle Age here and now has to double down on racks type units, right? So this is going to slow him down and lock him in feudal. It's a great play by Leenok. He's essentially forced this pivot in what Kazva wants to do. All because of that initial clash outside the base that led into the stagnation on the, the trade. Well, Kazva does at least now have those options we talked about. He needs to get rid of this army is the real issue. I'll just poke away at the spears. Everyone needs to be careful of Pumba there. So the horseman could get cleaned up. I think this is where you're going to lose the army if you're Lee not. But Lee is making an interesting pivot here. One I would not have expected at this stage. Men at arms. Decent unit. Not necessarily counted yet. But close to, right? Kazva has a lot of horsemen at this stage. I don't feel like I want to see Lee not build more of these men at arms. I'd love to see him prep for Castle Age and then bring men at arms out, right? When they're actually incredibly effective units, very efficient traders for what they cost and what they do for how long they last. This stage, I mean, men at arms, they are not exactly the most chunky of monkeys. You don't have armor clad. You, know, you don't have your hands on the Castle Age version. Their armor, the health, all of it is fairly limited. Just look, 120 health unit. Maybe he just feels like he can't contest in another way, but it, it feels like Spearman plus Lombo should be good enough. And by the way, Spearman plus Lombos is affordable when you consider how much you're, play you're paying for men-at-arms. My only thought here is Leenok is now going to let off the gas and stay in his base. So the whole logic is by going men-at-arms and pumping them out now, you're prepped for when you finally tech up, right? When you tech up, you hit a button, all of a sudden you've got 20 plus men-at-arms that are going to be impossible to deal with. And then his goal will be simply to flood into the base of the Mongol player, idle everything out, maybe even torch down a few pastures, which, by the way, if these pastures ever get blown up, it, it, it completely kills Kazwa. I can't emphasize this enough. Like, you've got berries and that's it. You'd have to come out of your base. And by the way, if we're at a stage where these, these pastures are getting blown up, you can't come out of your base. He doesn't want to come out of his base just yet. Not until he's got something heavy to wield himself. It is going to be the step readout being built up. And we have got the option of men at arms on the table. Lenok has yet to tech up, so Kazza might be tempted to build men at arms initially. Crossbows, of course, also on the table. Lancers would be one of the most logical choices on a map like this. Plenty of food and gold to work with. Lenok with this timing. I don't think he's going to be quick enough to intercept. He might be quick enough to prevent unit production, though, and that's a bigger deal. Three builders in the area. Tech up comes through. Now, this is the value of the men at arms. They're going to be able to stand there for a long time and torch. Horseman now joining in as well. Leenok has his opportunity to go, but he needs to take out the buildings. Leenok committing into the economy instead, though. He's going straight after the villagers. An interesting choice here. Leenok, he says, I've got these men at arms. I want to be able to dive. Chase them away. Outposts are going to offer up some safety for some of the villagers. In the meantime, a counter raid coming in as Kazva looked to strike the other way, already killing off more villagers. Problematic here. Lenok has not shut down production. He went for the juggler. He tried to prevent the resources to even get production going, but as a result of this, Kazza still has a way. He still has some gathering on the backside. He still has some, some potential there. So he is going to be able to get the initial troops out. We can see him now stockpiling the men at arms. Men at arms that are going to stalemate this for quite a while. They just need to kite out. 
allow the TC to whittle away at the reinforcements. Lombos will definitely be a big priority here. Kazva may be being forced to clash a little bit earlier than he wants to, but he does at least have the TC to assist here. Villagers. How many did he lose in the end there? Quite a lot. Yeah, more than I was expecting because the outpost got torched down. So he actually lost an extra 10 in that raid. That means that Kazva needs to extract some serious value here. Farms are starting to extend our range of the TC. Horsemen and archers able to cut off the reinforcements. Remember, these are only early men at arms. They are not that impressive in small numbers. But large numbers still exist in the base of Kazva. Kaz, with limited food, is struggling to get the men at arms out to counter this fully. Meanwhile, archers have been cleaned up. Kazva now looks worse for wear. Lenok has full control. And Kaz. He's had to reset, leave his base. He's gone for the deer on the backside. This is the one way that he can get an army out, but he needs to be fast about this. Lenok now in a position where he can easily look to tech up. Maybe won't have many men at arms left, but damage done most definitely. His outpost. I love the way he just targets them down. The priority is clear. Lombo's just slowly whittling away at the small numbers of men at arms that Kaz can push out. I mean, this was a, a brilliant timing raid by Lenok. Realistically, he could have went after the production buildings. But he saw immense value in the dive instead. He realized that Kazu was playing very loose in terms of static point defenses and had way too many villages condensed. This, by the way, is one of the very big weaknesses of playing trade on Prairie. It's hard to spot these weaknesses because it's so dominant right now. But when you do play Mongols on Prairie and you go for trade, you don't really need many people on gold. Wood lines are very limited next to non-existent. The most logical thing a lot of Mongol players are going to do if they're not out on the map is play condensed food eco underneath their TC. And that means you're going to have 20, 30, whatever have you villages sitting in one location with only enough room to protect half of them. And remember the other downside, the knock on effect that you get when you do the silver tree build is you do not have yam for those villages. That was the brilliant read by Lenok, and it's why he's in full control of this game now. King's Pass is coming out. That's going to extend his eco lead. Kazva has at least got enough men at arms out now to defend. But he needs more. Defense is not going to win him this game. The economy of the English is looking strong right now. King's Pass, it'll only get stronger. Trade is at least beginning again for Kazva. It's going to take a long time to get value out of that if you want to invest into it. Step breed out will at least make that somewhat feasible. A lack of trees might prove problematic, though. Expect Kazva to play for a new wood line in the next minute. You can see how starved he is right now. And by the way, this is forced upon him. He lost map control. He can't come out and play for wood. Even on the backside, it feels risky to bring loads of villagers down here because now that you're trading, that's going to draw attention again in this area. It's like first night is now being built for Lenox, so he's going to follow suit into heavily armored cavalry units. Now, one issue for Lenox is he has had to extend far out of protection here on the backside with his farm cluster. That's a prime opportunity for Lancers to get kills. That's exactly what we're going to do with the one two taps. Both sides right now. Lee, looking a little bit distracted. We'll finally react with the men at arms. Lee Nock. I hope he's not going to use these first knights to contest the raids. I'd love to see him just go make his own raids happen. He knows trade's going on again. He knows that Kaz is running out of resources safe at home. So unless he wants to keep his options restricted, he's going to have to come out soon. Look, that's what we're talking about. Kazza is moving out. So he is on that wood line on the south side. That's a raid opportunity. Small numbers right now, but they will increase. What's that Kazza? I mean, he's buying time right now, right? This, this is kind of the sacrifice you have to make. When you're in the situation where you're trying to reboom trade, you are either A, strong enough to just take direct fights and patrol the entire trade line, or B, you need to throw troops in the enemy base. The problem he's got right now is, is these troops are inconsequential. And Lenok is still sniping out these traders. Like, just a few horsemen is all it takes to kill them off. Oh, man. What a read by Lee. Kazma neither gets cake or gets to eat it in this situation. I mean, you can see just any attempt to raid in is now starting to be buffered away. His trade is being completely obliterated. I think he's got one trader left, and that's literally it. 
He's still not able to find that big fat raid he's looking for. It's crazy to think how brilliantly Lenok has been able to build up this, this eco lead off of killing so much. The way that he's raided with raid type units that usually struggle to necessarily find big clump kills. Maybe they get two or three here or there, but each time we see Lenok raid in with this large quantity of slow moving troops, he ends up taking out 10 villagers at a time. Might be about to see that again. Kazma is now looking to switch into crossbows, but the longbows are going to counter that out. Vuvu will be target down. Stop that pesky double production as quickly as possible. If Kazma wants any, he's going to have to pump it right now. Unable to, though. We'll look to pack up and move away. Longbows can even assist with killing there, though, so you need to be a bit careful. A bait out. Actual Clash going to come in. Men at Arms have got their, their armor clads, though, so they're incredibly tanky for the English. That front line will last long enough. Lombos, as a result, be able to be the, the damage, the difference maker here. Lancers, only two of them aren't really going to get much done. You can see they're just being targeted down. Lenok will stand his ground. Front line is going to distract long enough that the knights are going to get cleaned up. Remember, second wave will come in behind this. Speaking of which, Kazva at least gets his small wave of Lancers in. What is happening behind this is what I'm looking at. Lenok has a second wave ready to just pounce. His front line is still holding. I mean, this, folks, this is the power of armor clad. This is what makes the English so insane. That front line, despite the fact it was outnumbered, lasted much longer. At least finally he'll be able to get through now, but price is indeed high. Does at least shrink the gap. We can see the destroyed value is more or less next to each other at this stage, just a thousand between them. But Lenok now with double the army. This is the point, right? Lenok early on in this game took brilliant trades. Very efficient in the way they expended units. At this point in the game, you do not need to be efficient. Because your economy is efficient. You can just throw more meat into the blender and wait for it to jam. Kazwa's blender can no longer make puree at this stage. Instead, he, be, he might be the one who's going to get smushed especially with these remaining knights, just managing to snipe out even more traders. I mean, every time you think he's going to get it, he gets caught. That's why the spearmen were wrapping south side, by the way. I love the fact that Lenok isn't losing sight of the, the goal here. This goes eye on the prize. If the trade ever rebooms, Kazva survives. If it doesn't, Kazva's already dead. This is the, the tough pickle, right? If you A lot of people right now are like, oh, Mongol trade, OP, really strong, really hard to deal with. But Lenox read on the situation was brilliant. His 1 2 free comp in Fuel Age really locked this up. Made it very difficult for Kazva to invest in trade and fight and made sure that all bases were covered. As a result of that, this stage in the game, Kazva, I think he's got one fight left in him. It's going to have to be a good one. Let's go come fast. Maybe faster than he, he's willing to commit to is the issue. Because I'm seeing the Lenox men at arms numbers escalate and the spearman count looking damn good with no count of two spears. Oh my, oh my. I mean, this looks like a desperate play from Kazve. He's playing for, for relics now. <laughs> go for a wall log. Go for... No, it won't work. Not against the English. There's no way. Now that we're out at the base of Kazva, things start to even up in terms of who can arrive with troops. And the problem that you have with your Kazva is Lenok has a lot more to use in these battles. The spears, as I mentioned already, are not counted. Because your lances are heavily discounted. And that is enough to convince Kazva is over. No way he can fight outside of his base, which means no way he can ever get map control. Lenok will take the win.